Yes, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dries van Marken. I'm working for Colright. I joined it years, years ago. I started as a software engineer on the mainframe platform. Later, I also did development in Delphi and Java. In the beginning of this decennium, Colright started with a new integration team. Um, and uh, uh, I joined that team. Uh, and now I'm a technical architect for application integration. Today, I'm going to guide uh, and talk about the API journey in Colroyd Group. And now first, uh, Colroyd, what is it? It is a long, long uh, in the beginning of uh, 1900. Uh, it started as a bakery but later it evolved uh, to a wholesale and discounter. And now it's a family group with a lot of uh, fam uh, activities uh, that you see here. Uh, it goes from retail uh, to other activities like printing activities or even energy. Now, the philosophy of Colright was always the lowest prices. Now, lowest prices go with lowest costs. And to make the difference, uh, Colorado focused on process improvements. Now, the department in Colorado, the business processes and systems support Colorado Group in making this possible. Now, our journey, yes, as I told, uh, 40, 50 years, Colorado already started with automations to improve our processes um later on a few years ago uh we introduced a service oriented architecture uh we did a move to api management now we're busy with a project related to access control and we plan also to introduce an api portal but first after all the legacy uh there was the introduction of the service oriented architecture Now, when we started uh, in Colright, there weren't a lot of software companies that were creating general packages. So we uh, all needed to do it ourselves. Now, later on, we saw uh, software companies uh, that created packages like uh, SAP, uh, PeopleSoft, and we realized that uh, these packages were not always bad at all. So we also started introducing them. Problem was we created a kind of traditional modular way, uh, which everything was tied together. And it wasn't uh, very easy to integrate these packages with our existing code. So in 2015, we started with a service-oriented architecture program to make uh, our development and our applications more flexible uh, and to have more, to be able to have more reuse. So we started our program. Now that was very similar, uh, the pillars were very similar as a pillars explained uh, by Thomas and Matthias in, uh, for their API strategy. So we made the transformation to our service oriented architecture um, and our maturity increased gradually over all the years. And even now the service oriented architecture is still the preferred way for uh, enterprise integrations. So it's not a goal to zoom in very much uh, in the uh, SOA aspects, but uh, of course, um, it was a start for our API management platform. So it has an impact on it. So we need to give some insights on it. Yeah, after the introduction of our service oriented architecture, we did a move to API management because uh, that SOA program, um, we had some challenges with it, certainly for uh, new front-end uh, applications. So we decided to start an API program. 
um, go, uh, here we were supported by arches in it. Uh, and we tackled all the pillars. Uh, it was uh, soon clear that it was not enough to just create some guidelines to add a new tool. No, we need to cover all aspects to have a decent uh, API management platform. Now, why the evolution towards API management? Well, in our SOA program, we had an enterprise integration layer that was very well for our backend integrations. But uh, in the last years, we see an uprise of new uh, front-end applications. Uh, we have uh, uh, mobile applications uh, like our extra app or uh, the collect and go app. And um, we noticed that our enterprise integration layer was not um, always uh, handling all well with these new challenges. So we started a new strategic project um, and we called it the mobile readiness. Uh, just to make sure that we could manage these new channels. Uh, in this strategy, we defined uh, some objectives uh, that we want to reach uh, to be ready for our mobile readiness. Um, also important to note is that we start uh, with our internal APIs. The end goal is to be ready for all kinds of APIs, so also partner APIs or public APIs, but to learn and to evolve, we want to start with internal APIs and that has some impact on our strategy. Now, that new strategy, with that new focus in our strategy, we introduced a new layer, the front-end application integration layer, just to distinguish between our back-end integrations and the front-end integrations. With that new focus, there were also new requirements. Some are new requirements, but there are also uh, requirements that are already were covered partially on our integration layer and that uh, just could be extended. Now for setting up or defining our requirements, we already took into account all types of uh, APIs. So not only the internal APIs, but also the partner and the public APIs. Later on in the implementation phase of our uh, program, we don't, do not cover all requirements, but we already know all our requirements. Now, of course, we had already our enterprise integration platform uh, that was built out of components from uh, Software AG. Uh, this was already used a couple of years, so we have already quite some maturity in it. And yeah, we evaluated if this platform could be used, used also for our API management. Now, it was rather quickly clear that it was not well enough. It was not sufficient to handle all our API management requirements. So conclusion was that we needed to introduce a new platform with more focus on API management and that front-end uh, integration. Now, at uh, around the same time, Software AG was also busy with um, upgrading their software tool set and they were busy with an improved API gateway. So we chose to upgrade our software AG stack um, because uh, uh, it made it easier to integrate it with our existing enterprise and uh, layer. Now, um, we didn't immediately uh, set up all the components of an API platform um, just because of our focus uh, to internal APIs. An example is that we didn't immediately set up an API portal, but that we will configure it later. Now with this step, our platform 
is ready. Now, then we need to talk about the governance. Uh, in our SOA program, we already defined a life cycle for a service in which we defined activities and deliverables for the different uh, roles. Uh, like we know, uh, we, the architect need to identify the service. Uh, we need to design a service. Uh, we need to create the implementation. It must be tested, needs to go live. Uh, we have a complete uh, life cycle. Now in that life cycle, we have foreseen several checkpoints uh, to make sure that we can govern the quality. Now, <clears throat> this was a, is a quite heavy governance uh, because it's a centralized um, quality checkpoints, uh, much more suited for uh, our SOA services. Now, because this heavy centralized um, governance, uh, it wasn't quite meeting all our requirements for API management. We want to have fast uh, market uh, introduction, um, we faster delivery and with a, a central team, uh, you're always having some bottlenecks and delays. So we needed to change some things in our governance. Now, and there, what we did is uh, we looked at our governance and we introduced several different uh, governance variants. Uh, we uh, have the full governance, which is applied to our core SOA services, uh, because we still believe that for these kind of services that we need to strive for a very good quality. Uh, their quality is a bit more important than um, a fast delivery. We have also our reusable APIs and there we have a kind of light governance in which we have a partially decentralized governance. So the architecture and identification is still centralized but the design uh, quality checkpoint and the certified uh, checkpoint is decentralized. So the governance and the review is there happening in the development team. So there's no bottleneck um, in a central team. They can take care of it themselves. And then for non-reusable APIs, we have a completely decentralized governance. So every quality checkpoint is decentralized and happens in the uh, internal development team. So although we have several governance types, we still find it important that governance and quality checkpoints happen. Only the difference is that uh, depending the type of service or API, it happens in the development team or in a centralized team. What we also did in our um, API management track was a look at uh, deployment. Uh, there, we also wanted uh, faster delivery. Now, that is tied to our uh, life cycle. In the design phase, we give, create a design of our API and it's happening with open API specification. That API specification is uploaded to our development API gateway uh, where we can add the necessary API policies. We can add security policies. We can add throttling policy to protect our server. We can think about caching uh, and all other uh, policies. Once we are ready, uh, the API definition is exported from that uh, development gateway and it's checked in into Git. Then a Jenkins pipeline start to build our API to do the necessary validations with API linting to generate documentation and then add this to Artifactory. Uh, Jenkins pipeline will also take care of deploying our API to test and production. That was uh, deploying. 
we also want a reporting about our the state of our APIs. Now, in our integration platform, we had already some analysis and some reporting. Um, it was available in an uh, Elasticsearch um, database uh, with Kibana dashboards. And these dashboards gives us, gave already some insights about uh, transactions of our services and APIs. Now for API management and the front-end integration, certainly because these are also externally exposed, uh, we need additional insights about success rates, uh, policy monitoring, do, how is our caching behaving? And to have these additional insights, we created some additional dashboards. Um, also to note, um, for us, monetization is at this moment uh, not important. And on the longer term, we also don't see a real requirement yet. And these are some dashboards uh, that we use uh, on our Elasticsearch uh, stack. So we have uh, events and policy validations over time. Uh, how much uh, transactions do we have for us uh, API? Uh, what is the response code trend? Um, also average response times. Uh, how, is, how efficient is our caching? Uh, that are all examples of our uh, dashboards. Now, our process is ready, our architecture is ready. We have defined um, a reference architecture for APIs. We have uh, guidelines, best practices, but now that doesn't mean that the uh, organization was ready. Uh, so what we did is we create uh, trainings for all types of profiles. We create trainings for architects, for developers, for analysts, uh, and um, we made it available through our academy tool. The rollout was also done with pilots, uh, mainly front-end focused projects, uh, and we foresaw uh, have intensive coaching for these pilots. After this, the um, organ embedding and the organization was also ready and we could go for a higher maturity related to API management. Now, we also want to follow up our progress. Um, in our strategy, we have defined some objectives. Uh, we also want to know, yeah, do we meet these objectives? How is the progress? And for this, we have defined some KPIs uh, uh, to see uh, the progress uh, and the evolution. And this way it gives us also a possibility to anticipate if things is, are, aren't going uh, like expected. Uh, and some examples of uh, our KPI dashboard. So we have uh, the number of APIs to see how it's growing, um, in what states they are. Uh, we have also KPIs related to uh, the domains uh, in which they are used. Uh, we have the number of consumers of uh, APIs, which gives um, an idea about the reuse. Uh, we follow up also the maturity of our developers or architects or analysts, um, which gives us also the possibility to make some changes or to give some more extensive trainings. Now, at that moment, we had an API management, but it was really focused on internal APIs. And yeah, we, at the beginning of our strategy, we wanted at the end to go to also public and partner APIs. And for enabling that, we need some next steps. The first step is the access control. So we needed to work on API security. It's not that we didn't have any security, but until now, we mainly had uh, traditional web applications, which were at, uh, internally exposed. Uh, so there wasn't really a need for additional security efforts. But now 
we're shifting towards uh, single page applications, mobile applications that are uh, calling APIs. And there we want to go to more uh, token-based security to have more security. Together with this shift, we also shifted from SOAP to REST, uh, mainly because you know, the singular page applications and mobile applications um, required to work with REST but there are also other uh, reasons to make that shift. Uh, for instance, also uh, employ finding employees, it's uh, this time easier to find them uh, with knowledge about Rust than it's uh, find them with uh, uh, SOAP knowledge. Now, to tackle this, um, we worked uh, with a team of experts. Uh, that team of experts tackles all our security challenges on all levels, architecture, analysis, development. They have delivered end-to-end -end solution patterns and guidelines to work with OAuth. Uh, and they have also delivered uh, trainings. Um, to introduce it, we will again start with pilots and later on believers with intensive coaching. Now, this access control is going on. We expect to roll it out uh, the coming months, uh, but that's still not enough. Uh, we also need to have an API portal uh, for exposing our um, external and uh, partner APIs and public APIs to have uh, external documentation to uh, do re self registration um, and to find uh, documentation. Until now, we didn't spend the efforts, uh, but uh, in future, we think that the time will be there to introduce uh, the API portal. And that was our journey. Um, now it's time for questions. Yes, and we. We have uh, quite some uh, some questions, so you have uh, inspired the audience. I will, uh, because I'm not sure that we will have time to answer all questions, uh, I will, during the talk, uh, start from the most popular to the, to the less popular, uh, and then all other questions can always be answered uh, offline. Huh? Uh, so the first question from Johannes, uh, where do you determine... Ah, one popped earlier. Uh, Bart Kaiser is the lucky one to have the most popular question. Uh, how do you ensure the maturity uh, of your developers? Uh, what we do is uh, yearly, we have a questionnaire uh, in which we ask about their feeling about the maturity. Uh, but we will also align uh, this with um, yeah, other team members. So, uh, in this, uh, we have a kind of uh, report uh, evaluation of uh, the, our developers. Yep. Then uh, the second question is, um, which development uh, gateway is used to add uh, contracts and applies policies on them? A market tool or a custom built tool? Uh, we use... Um, uh, the API gateway of software AG. So we have web methods API gateway. That's the runtime component, our API gateway. It's used together with Centra site as a governance tool for governing our life cycle. And we will introduce also web methods API portal. It are all uh, components of software AG. And where do you determine whenever an API is re reusable or not, is that uh, done by the project teams? Um, and if you do it by the project teams, are you then not afraid uh, to have end up with too many point-to-point -point connections instead of building reusable APIs? Um, it is so, I, internal APIs are anyway um, only allowed inside the domain. Uh, if you go outside the boundaries of a domain, uh, it, uh, you need to have involved uh, that centralized governance. And then um, 
uh, that will govern more uh, that reusable aspect of our uh, APIs. Okay, um, next question. Uh, what's your recommended tool set uh, to, the design, to design the, the APIs uh, in order to meet uh, open API standards? Oh, for the tool set, uh, for creating the design, uh, we don't force anything. Uh, it's a tool that they are used to. Uh, however, for... Um, governing the quality uh, with API linting, we are using spectral. Uh, it can, that can also be used with stoplight.io. Um, so that can also to, that could be used to design that a, uh, API, but the real governance is done on a central level uh, with uh, spectral. We create rules for it and uh, each API will then be checked with that uh, you know, uh, central tool. 